Hey there, Liberty Entrepreneurs Nation. Welcome back. This is episode 50, and it's kind of a big deal. In the podcast world, reaching the 50 episode mark is a huge milestone, and today's guest is one of my role models. If you didn't hear last week's episode, I'll be speaking at the FinCon Financial Conference in San Diego next week on the topic of what is Bitcoin and why should you care? If you have any feedback on what I should include in the presentation, please email me at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com or tweet at Liberty E Podcast. Okay, let's start the show. Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Weiner, and this is episode 50, Why Systems and Workflows Are Essential for Success with Kate Erickson of Entrepreneur on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire, or EO Fire, is one of the most successful podcasts on the internet, which typically has revenue of over $100,000 each month. Kate, alongside her business and life partner, John Lee Dumas, have built an amazing business, including a successful podcast where they interview a different entrepreneur seven days a week. They host a paid mastermind group called Podcasters Paradise, as well as offering several courses on how to include webinars in your business, how to start a podcast, how to hire, train, and work with virtual assistants, and much, much more. In this episode, Kate and I discuss why she quit her marketing job to become an entrepreneur. Why was it such a difficult decision and how she managed the anxiety and fear associated with losing that dependable paycheck, benefits, and time off? Needless to say, Kate could never go back to the normal nine to five. And with some preparation, she thinks that you too could do the same. You don't want to miss the part where Kate chats about how offering free content catapulted their business to earning over $100,000 in revenue every single month and oftentimes much more. If you can help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And you don't help enough other people get what they want by going to them and saying, pay me money for this. You get other people what they want by giving them content that could really help them solve a pain point, solve the trouble that they're having in their life. Are you ready to become an entrepreneur? Do you wanna tell the man to go himself? Then sign up for the Liberty Entrepreneur's weekly newsletter and receive all of our podcasts delivered directly to your email inbox. You'll hear me interview experienced and successful entrepreneurs who are doing what you can currently only dream of. And guess what? It doesn't have to be a dream. Also, keep up with us on social media by following on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and today I've got a very special guest, Kate Erickson. She's a content creator, a podcaster, and the brains behind the scenes at Entrepreneur on Fire, one of my favorite podcasts, and one of the largest and most successful entrepreneur podcasts on the internet. It's a very pleasure to, to have Kate on. Thank you so much, Kate, and welcome to the show. Ash, thank you so much. I'm really stoked to be here, and this has been a long time coming. I'm excited that we're connecting online right now. Yeah, I agree, Kate. Thanks so much. We actually met at the Podcast Movement 2016 conference in Chicago this year, which was a great conference. I, I had a lot of takeaways from it, and I really liked yours and John's uh, presentation as well as Pat Flynn's presentation. Just a lot of solid content. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pat Flynn always knocks it out of the park, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Kate, give us a little background of who you are and just what you know what your passions are. Yeah, for sure. So um, I, like you said, I'm kind of the other half here at EO Fire. John and I are partners in both business and in life. So that's been great fun to team up and kind of have a shared vision. Uh, I'm a California girl. I was raised in San Diego. And right now, John and I find ourselves living in Puerto Rico. Ah. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're just kind of, we're big fans of getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, we were looking for an adventure or something a little different. And 
and we both love to travel. So we thought, why not a uh, why not visit one of our kind of sister islands, I guess? You know, we're still a Commonwealth of the United States, so that kind of made it easy on the visa side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and my passions are just, wow, helping entrepreneurs, um, helping people who don't realize that entrepreneurship is an option because that's where I found myself probably about five years ago. I, I was in a corporate job and kind of not really loving my day-to-day life and It wasn't until somebody, you know, kind of smacked me in the face with entrepreneurship that I thought, oh, my gosh, I didn't even know that I could do this. Yeah, it's, it's not something that we really learn about whenever we're children or whenever we're going through school or even college. You know, entrepreneurship is a mystery for most people until they have to go get that first job and they start figuring out like, okay, well, I'm kind of a cog in this wheel, but then what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What is that? And what does it mean to build a business? What was it like, Kate, for you to go? I think you came from the marketing world to go from a salary marketing job into becoming an entrepreneur. What was that step like? Um, It was very scary. It was definitely not something that I was comfortable with. And, you know, even though there was so much that I disliked about my day to day in terms of feeling fulfilled at the end of the day in terms of feeling appreciated for the hard work that I was doing. Um, there was a lot of comfort in having a paycheck and being able to contribute to a quote unquote retirement account and all of these things that, you know, are we, we should be grateful that we have those with a corporate position. But, um, you know, I knew that that I could, I knew that there was something else. That was kind of like my first vision when I decided that I was going to quit my job is I just had this sinking feeling in my stomach that there has to be something more than this. Yeah. It's really scary going out on your own and, you know, just building your own lifestyle that you want. You know, that's a big theme of Liberty Entrepreneurs is becoming an entrepreneur while it is scary and it's a ton of hard work you get to dictate and control more aspects of your life than ever before. You know, the most freedom I've ever felt is whenever I started becoming an entrepreneur and every decision I was making was my own decision in my own business. And yeah, it is scary, Kate, but it's very rewarding. And, you know, what does being an entrepreneur mean to you? Well, I think you summed it up beautifully, Ash. I mean, this feeling of freedom and this ability to have control and take responsibility and just like live in every moment knowing that you are choosing to live the life that you're living right now and that you are choosing to impact other people and create like these amazing ripple effects in the world. You know, at at one of my last corporate jobs, I was literally in a department and my job was to lay other people off. Mm. Like the quote unquote impact that I was making in my job was always tied to essentially ruining someone else's life for that moment, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's not a good feeling. You know, being an entrepreneur is, is creating the life that you want to live and having the freedom to spend time with your family, to spend time traveling, to not only have two weeks of vacation per year. I mean, how ridiculous is that? <laughs> it, uh, it, it seems so ridiculous looking back on it, doesn't it? Yes. You know, and, and entrepreneurs are creating a freer and better life for themselves. But we, in order to do that, we have to give value out into society. We have to help other people. You know, an entrepreneur just can't live on an island by himself. He needs to solve, he or she needs to solve problems. Ultimately, what an entrepreneur does is they're looking out into society and thinking, I can do that better, right? I can produce that product or I can offer that service just a little bit better. And this is what I'm passionate about. Let me go do it. And to segue that into Entrepreneur on Fire, which I love, I I may actually like and appreciate Kate's take, which is your podcast on Entrepreneur on Fire, just a little bit more because it's so actionable. But coming back to the theme of entrepreneurs helping other people, tell us about all the free content and why you give these free courses and, and why you're helping people learn how to create podcasts and how to do webinars and what has been the effect of offering all this high quality free content to building your business. 
Well, I mean, the effect has been what you see Entrepreneur on Fire as today. I mean, everything that we've built, the amazing community that we have, Ash, you included. Thank you for the kind words about the podcast and everything. That's amazing. Um, that's what it's created. It's created this tight knit family and community who we lovingly refer to as Fire Nation. And, you know, what it's allowed us to do is build a very strong foundation of trust with our community. And when you think about like the baseline, John started Entrepreneur on Fire with like the, the quote and thought in mind, if you can help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And you don't help enough other people get what they want by going to them and saying, pay me money for this. You get other people what they want by giving them content that could really help them solve a pain point, solve the trouble that they're having in their lives. And that's what we base the foundation of our business off from. Now, the free courses and stuff that we create have been direct asks from our audience. We've gotten to know them. We pay attention to the individual conversations that we have with them. We value and respect the emails and the phone calls and the social media messages that we get. And through doing that and really paying attention to what these core struggles and pain points are, we've been able to create free courses out of that to help people. And when you help people, they start to know, like, and trust you. When they know, like, and trust you, when it comes to the point where they actually need a service or maybe a higher level of content to help them accomplish the goals that they've set, you will be the one that they turn to and they will pay you for that product or service. Especially when they see how quality the free stuff you're giving out. Just think about what their mind's doing on the quality of the stuff that you're you're asking them to pay for. It's like, wow, Kate just gave me an entire season on how to set smart goals. I can't imagine what she the type of content she'd be able to provide to me if I if I join, you know, Fire Nation in a different way or if I buy her book on getting set up with your podcast or et cetera. You know, it really does create that sense of trust. And it gives you a sense of credibility. You know, that, that that's one of the reasons that I started a podcast is I was like, you know, I feel like I have so much to offer and so much passion about freedom and entrepreneurship that I want to be a bridge and I want to help give as much content to as many like-minded people so that they can see a, at least have a similar perspective or that know that this perspective exists. Kate, um, let's dig into your podcast. Kate's take. I love this podcast people. I have two podcasts that I regularly listen to. One is Kate's Take, which is an actionable type of podcast where she helps teach you ways to be successful, being smart goals, you know, how to set and accomplish goals, uh, or understanding and appreciating the role of processes and workflows and systems to be successful. The other podcast is a philosophy podcast. So it's very, very different types of podcasts, <laughs> but Kate, how did you get the idea to create Kate's Take? So Kate's Take started out as an audio blog. And this is probably a year and a half after I came on board the EO Fire team. So I one of the very first things that I started creating as a part of the EO Fire team was our blog. I love writing. I love kind of breaking down steps. I love sharing experiences through writing. So I started writing on the blog and after probably about six, seven months, I was just feeling like I wasn't reaching enough people. I didn't feel like enough people were coming to the site and consuming this content. And whether it's because they didn't know about it, um, maybe they didn't have time to sit down in front of their computer and read for 15 minutes, whatever the case may be, I thought, wait a second, we've built our entire business on a podcast and we repeatedly talk to people about the power behind podcasting because it's this free medium that where you get to share targeted content that's on demand for people. And so, you know, it kind of just like clicked in my head why am I not creating audio content out of my posts? It's going to help me reach more people. It could potentially bring more people back to the blog. So that's why I started Kate's Take. And I just recently, as you noted, Ash, um, in January of 2016, switched over to seasons on the podcast. So I went from basically posting two times per week on the blog and creating a, an audio podcast out of that to saying, you know what, what if I started focusing my content so that each season 
walked people and took them through a very specific journey. Because as I was creating all this content and just posting twice per week, I started getting emails from people that said, um, you know, like I did an episode on how our team works together, how our virtual team is a part of our business. And I got all these emails from people saying like, Kate, that was such an awesome episode. I really appreciated you letting us in behind the scenes of how your team works. Like, how do I go about starting a team? Like, where would I start? And the more that I got these emails in response to single posts and episodes that I was creating, I kept thinking to myself, like, that could be an entire, like, course on how yeah. to hire your virtual team. And that's kind of where it came is, you know, I listened to the feedback that my listeners were giving me. I realized that they were, that, my idea of creating like a very step by step process for people of how to do something, I can't accomplish that in a single episode, but I can definitely accomplish that by focusing on one single thing for an entire season. So that's what I did. Yeah. And, and it was a terrific change, Kate. I mean, much kudos to you for making that and listening to the feedback from your audience, because I can tell you, although I've always appreciated Kate's take, I appreciate it even more now that it is very, it's always been actionable, but now it's very specific. Like you said, it's a course. I mean, for any of my listeners that haven't checked out Kate's take, uh, I recommend you go and just listen to season one or season two. It's eofire.com slash season one or eofire.com slash season two. Uh, Kate goes over and goes through setting goals and accomplishing goals as well as processes and systems and why they're important in your business. Kate, I've got to talk to you about systems. I, I'm a systems engineer by training and you know I've worked in different types of engineering roles where systems have been paramount to our success. How did you get familiar with systems? What are systems and why should every entrepreneur and business person look to implement systems and workflows? So I think systems is just kind of like a part of my being almost. <laughs> and I think a lot of people who are, you know, really into systems that in some way, shape or form, this has been a part of their life, whether they know it or not for a very long time. And when I start looking back to think like, when did systems really become a part of my life? It just always has been. I go to the grocery store and I don't look at it as like, these these are aisles with food in them. I'm like, look at how they've created like where things are placed. Mm -hmm. Look at how they've created this stand at the front, which is bringing you into this aisle. Look at how the cash registers are set up. Like I just notice these things. And right. and when I'm in a situation where something isn't set up efficiently, like there's 10 people working, but only like two of them are actually doing efficient things. I automatically sit there and in my mind, I'm thinking of how this could be set up better. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, you know, a system gives you more control and predictability. And from the very beginning of creating Liberty Entrepreneurs, and I'm sure Entrepreneur on Fire, it's like, okay, I, I don't want to just guess how I'm doing this stuff. Let me figure out how to do this. And then let me write it down and figure out, you know, what are my steps or what is my system? So the next time I don't need to use that, that energy to figure it all out again, I can just follow my steps. You know, it, it's so paramount to having order almost in your business. And, you know, we have so many thoughts that go through our head as entrepreneurs that it is nice to delegate some of those thoughts down to a piece of paper that we can come back to. I remember hearing one of your podcasts, Kate, that says um, you know, every task you should either uh, automate, delegate, or batch. What does that mean? Yes. Well, I'm really glad that you went through like, I mean, that is the power of systems is that you don't have to recreate the wheel every time you work on something. These repetitive tasks that you're doing in your business every single day that you're having to sit down and then think back or recall from an email what exactly you're supposed to do or how it works or where you need to go to pull a report. These are all things that we could be creating systems around so that we don't have to do that every single time we go to do it. And that's where the automate delegate batch comes into play because once you have kind of like a an inventory list of all these things that you're doing in your business and you start to categorize that inventory of the things you're working on into daily, weekly, monthly tasks, you'll start to identify those tasks that you could either 
automate with the help of a piece of software or a tool online that you could delegate, meaning you could either hire an individual or a company to help you with that piece of the puzzle, or you could hire a virtual team member who's helping with that or batch and batching is typically the things that you can't automate and you don't want to give them to somebody else. Like for example, Ash recording your podcast, you're not gonna have somebody else record your podcast for you because your audience wants to hear you. These are the types of tasks that we batch, which means we're not going to do an interview on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're going to do all three interviews on Monday. We're making it super efficient. We're saving ourselves time because we're not context switching. And we're able to build a lot more momentum when we batch things as opposed to just doing a little bit here and a little bit there. And one thing that I really appreciated is whenever you put out the first mini series course on how to hire, train and work with a virtual assistant, you know, this is something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs are starting to be interested in, you know, especially since the dollar's so strong, it makes uh, foreign labor uh, much less expensive, but it's mutually beneficial. Like I, I recently hired just about a month ago, I, I hired my virtual assistant, Dexter, from the Philippines, and he used to work 15 hours a day to get paid the same that I now pay him for four hours a day. So what has been the effect of virtual assistants on yours and John's team and your ability to delegate tasks to them? That's super powerful. Congratulations on hiring a team member. That's so exciting. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Um, yeah, our team at EO Fire is everything. They are such a part of what we create. And I, every chance I get, I love that you brought it up because I love to recognize how powerful um, their presence in our business is. It's really allowed us to, me and John, be able to focus on the business instead of in the business. And when you get that team to help you um, do you know, a lot of the times it is mundane tasks, but it's tasks that you would otherwise be spending very precious time on. And when you spend time on those tasks, you zap your energy to where by the end of it, you don't have any creative juice left. You don't have the energy or the enthusiasm to record a podcast episode or to write that epic blog post because you've just spent all your energy on things that could easily be delegated to someone else. And I love that you bring up the fact that, you know, we've had people reach out to us and say, you know, why not the US? Like, why don't you hire somebody in the States? You know what? Every single human being in this entire world is a person and they need a job and they have a family to support and they have responsibilities. And just like you said, Ash, some of the stories that our virtual team has told us about their working environment and what they used to have to go through to not even make a, a half of what we're paying them, it breaks my heart. And if we can help people like that, have amazing jobs to where they get to stay at home with their family and they don't have to be scared of getting robbed every single day when they go to work. Like, I want to be a part of that. And that's really at the core of the energy behind entrepreneurship, in my opinion, is not only are we helping people in creating products and services that they want, and we're doing it better than what the market's currently offering it, but we're also creating jobs and creating opportunities for people to have a choice to better themselves, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Dexter, my, my virtual assistant, used to have to ride three hours a day to work and then work a full eight, nine hour shift and then ride three hours home a day yeah. and and now he makes the same amount of money I'm able to pay him the same amount for working from home four hours a day his family loves it and he has an opportunity to pursue photography which is one of his passions that he simply didn't have time to do so I'm a big proponent of virtual assistants I will say Kate that was the one of the first uh, multi episode podcast that I listened to from you uh, that's how to hire and train a virtual assistant do you have the URL offhand you know I think it's eofire.com slash slash virtual but I would have to, I'd have to confirm that. Yeah, I'll double check it and I'll put it in the show notes, yeah. Kate, as, as well as season one and two. Uh, Kate, well, I want to respect your time. Do you have any advice or tips or something that you learned through your own failures or journey of becoming an entrepreneur or a podcaster that you'd like to share with my audience? 
Yeah, absolutely. I would love to share that, you know what, it's going to be really scary when you first get that thought in your head that there's something bigger and better out there. It means that there is. Do not be afraid of that realization. Go after it. Embrace that realization and understand that it's going to be tough and you're going to have to overcome a lot of roadblocks. You're going to have to get really uncomfortable and you're going to have to do a lot of things that you've never done before. But what waits on the other side of that is your freedom, is your ability to do what you want with your time to create the life that you want to live and to wake up every morning excited about what's ahead. So I really hope that for every single person who's tuning in today and Ash, I know you do too. So that's why I love what you're doing with this podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much. Kate Erickson from entrepreneur on fire. I've been fired up for this conversation. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all of your insights and your journey. Kate, thank you so much and keep doing what you're doing. You're welcome. Thanks Ash. You just listened to episode 50, why systems and workflows are essential for success with my guest, Kate Erickson of Entrepreneur on Fire. Don't forget to check out her podcast, Kate's Take, links are in the show notes, and sign up for my newsletter to receive every Liberty Entrepreneur's episode delivered directly to your email inbox. Until next time, keep building freedom.